Hello friends, once again we come now to the fourth session of this mergers and acquisitions. Now in this case we have to look at what the evaluation, we stopped last time on exactly how do we go about financing the deal and all that. But today we are going to be a very very technical orientation because we have to know what is the exchange ratio. Now what is the exchange ratio? It's the number of acquirer shares that are offered for each share of the target company. To arrive at the exchange of both the acquirer and their target, conduct a valuation of the target and from this process, the acquirer determines the maximum price it is willing to pay while the target determines the minimum it is willing to accept. Now what do we look here at? You'll see when a company is going to acquire somebody else or is going to merge into another company, they should know what should be the value of the company at the end of the whole process. This is because if A is going to acquire B, A should be willing to give a certain value to uh, the organization B. That means the shareholders value should get an equivalent value whatever the value B is worth. Most of the time it is always a premium. You take the case of when Tata's went and bought over Chorus, they gave a little premium on the existing share price. When Asolor went and brought, uh, when uh, Mittal went and brought Asolor, again it was given a, a premium and they increased it by 50% even after the first bid was given and that is known as the valuation. If you look at what this says, there is a within this range the actual agreement price will depend on the number of factors like estimating expected benefits, each party's other's investment opportunities and relative bargaining, bargaining abilities. Look at the way the estimated benefits are. You see when A is going to acquire B, that will be B will want a higher price and A will want to give a lower price. But then there is a negotiation which involves and then they come to an agreed price. And that is what we must look out for on what B will accept and A is ready to give. And that is where the meeting point takes place. But this depends on various expect, uh, uh, things. What is the expected business going to be? What is the investment opportunities for each one? If B is struggling because they don't have the money, then they might be give, willing to give you a little at a lower price. Also the, the bargaining, which are the strengths and weaknesses, you will try and find out where are you going to settle at. That's exactly the thing. You look at what the exchange ratio says. It says the exchange ratio is equal to offer price divided by the share price of the acquirer. Let us assume that based on the valuation of Y is limited, X limited has determined that it is willing to offer Rs. 65 per share for Y limited. The following is the detail of X and Y limited. Now this is a very technical so please go on looking at the next slide. At the present the earning is 50 million, the other one is Y is 10 million, the shares outstanding is 5 while Y is 2 million, earnings per share is 10 and Y is 5. The stock price is 150, the stock price is here is 50, the P ratio is 15 and there you can see why. Now you can look at what has happened in this case. Here you have seen that the price that means why X is valued more than Y. But that is basically because from a share outstanding of 2 million, they are getting 10 million. But from a share outstanding X of 5 million, they are getting 50 million. That means the value they are getting is much more. That means X is producing much better, X has got better product, that means X has got a better control over the business, over the industry. So when they are going to acquire Y, they will always look for a better opportunity to buy, they will look for better. So look at the stock price in the market, it is 50 rupees. But see what happens, X gives a separate price. X wants to give a price of 65 rupees. That is basically because they want to give a better price for the whole uh, because they, at the end they know what is the value of the organization. They are giving 30% premium and that is exactly what it looks at. It looks at whether what premium can we offer to the market. So that the exchange ratio becomes 65 to 150 and that is where it becomes 0.43. So for every value of X that means they will be able to give 0.43 of the value X. That means why if one shareholder has one share, they will be able to give it at 0.43. And this is known as the exchange ratio. Now look at what happens. The total number of shares offered by X 
to the shareholders of Y can be calculated by the exchange ratio. And there are 2 million shares there. So 2 million into 0.43 comes to 8, uh, 866,667 shares which will be outstanding. So that shares will be transferred to the um, uh, X from Y. So just to continue, we said there was a 2 million shares of Y and the exchange ratio was 0.43. If you multiply by that, you get 866,667 shares, which X will have to offer shareholders of Y of their shares. That is known as the shareholder value or shares which will be the exchange in lieu of what they hold of X limited.